Hello and welcome to this tutorial uh, which will show you how to use the TechSoft software to design your own clock. Um, you're going to follow and document all the steps you see so that you have a good understanding of the key skills you need. Uh, in this example you'll see a clock designed in the style of Charles Rennie Macintosh. Don't forget this guy was inspired heavily by Japanese architecture and you see that in the thick geometric lines and finely crafted wood in his products. He was also inspired by nature and you see this in stained glass and some imagery for example a bird a swift in one of those chairs. Now as you follow this um, the construction method we're using is the slotted technique which literally when you when you have uh, one piece of material slot into another and the material options are acrylic laser MDF or laser plywood. Just a note on their thickness these are mostly three millimeters thick and that's important because it determines what the size of the gap would be for it to fit accurately. So uh, if you go to the desktop this is how you get started there's a folder called design and technology double click that and the software is called TechSoft so if I just go to uh, the folder TechSoft and open it up uh, it might ask for your name just click off we don't need to worry about that now you'll notice it has a grid um, this grid is going to help us work accurately so the first thing we need to do is turn grid lock on and you should sketch and document that now the grid lock helps us stick onto the dots the other thing is these dots are quite spaced apart, so I'm going to make them closer together by double clicking on the grid itself at the top uh, right here and change this to 5 and 5, X5, Y5 at the very top. Click OK, and now it's going to allow me to draw accurately on a much smaller grid um, in terms of its spacing. So, clock, I want the top to be round. I've got a circle here, but this could be any size, so I'm going to click and hold on the circle and go to uh, draw a circle with a given radius. So if you click and hold on these drawing tools, you get different options. I'm gonna click on that, and I want the radius to be 70. Click OK, and this is now, you see it's sticking on the dots, that's because grid lock is on. I'm gonna click in the middle. Now the hole in the center of that clock is going to be eight millimeters. So if I click again and hold on draw a circle with a given radius, I'm gonna change this now to four, click OK, and in the center. That's where uh, if you just click escape it allows you to click off. So now I've got basically a clock face with a hole in it. That's where the mechanism is going to come through. Now I want to click on the line tool and find the outermost point on the circle and you need to look at the rail numbers. You should document that. The rail numbers tells you the exact size of the thing you're drawing and if I go from the outermost point here, click and drag down. I'm looking at the rail numbers here to be minus 100. Um, so when you get there click again and then I'm going to click and go across I'm going to go 140 and then click again and then go up now if you go too far it doesn't matter because there's this delete any tool uh, we're going to go for delete part of an object so document that one sketch it describe it document um, delete part of the object if I click on that second option it allows me to delete that little bit also I don't need this anymore so I can delete that okay so there's my my rough clock face uh, I'm now going to um, uh, put some dashes in to indicate the hours. So if you click on the line tool, very obvious, this just allows you to draw a simple line. I'm just going to do it 10 millimeters down, approximately there. And I want to rotate this multiple times to give me each hour of the day. So um, you need to select on it using the select tool. You can drag over and actually click on other things. And there's a, this tool here called Transform. This is the one you need to document. This has loads of useful tools if I go across, one of them being rotate the selected object. Uh, now, I'm going to repeat the object 30 degrees. Leave it as it is, so click Repeat, 30 degrees, OK. And if I click in the very centre of the clock, it's repeated 12 times. Brilliant, or 11 times. I'm now going to click Save. Keep clicking Save as you make progress. Um, I'm going to call, this should be uh, in a tech folder, and I'm going to call it the Charles Winnie Macintosh Clock. Make sure this is your own, in your own end drive. Okay, now I want some numbers. Uh, so if I click ABC, this allows me to type any text. I click ABC, click somewhere on my clock, and I'm going to change the number uh, to 12. Now I don't like that font, so if I click and then go down to the bottom here, Properties, I'm going to click on properties and I'm going to change the settings so that I can actually choose a font I want. I'm going to go with this one. The other thing I want to do is turn the fill off. So if you click fill and then no fill, click OK, click OK, OK, and it's it's not solid block anymore and it's the font is slightly different. Now if I reposition this, it's still a little bit large. So 
uh, at this point, and if I zoom in, this is the one and only time I think you're going to turn grid lock off. So I'm going to turn grid lock off now, which is the top right thing. And now if I click on a, one of these yellow grid points, I can shrink it down. And this middle yellow box allows me to reposition. Uh, now with grid lock off, I basically I'm not on the grid, so it's not as accurate, but I can position something exactly where I want it. Now I want other numbers here, so I'm going to click on there, and then these two yellow boxes here are copy at the bottom, so I'm going to click copy. I'm going to drag this down here. However, it still says 12, so I need to click back on properties on the bottom uh, right, and then change that to 3, click OK. It's a bit close in, so I'm just going to move it out. I'm going to copy again. Again, these two yellow boxes, click, drag to a new position, click on properties, six and i'm going to do it again copy relocate change it to nine okay right making good progress i'm going to click save now i need to turn gridlock back on this is really important gridlock on now my supports if i look at the actual design you'll see they're sort of rectangles with holes in so i want to try and replicate that so I'm going to click now on rectangle shapes and there's lots of different ones. I'm just going to go with the rectangle option and around the same point at the bottom, I'm going to go up. I'm going to go, uh, let's say, um, 50 millimeters back and let's go, yeah, I'm happy with 80 millimeters up. Click. I'm also going to add some geometric lines like I said, this is meant to be in the style of Charles Winnie Macintosh. So I'm just going to do a few more. I can actually click over these and then copy and re repeat them. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now I've got one side. Uh, I now need to think, figure out how am I going to slot this all together. Okay, uh, this is where you're going to use something called Contour. So you have to document this tool. Now if I just click Contour is there and then just click outside of an object you see that it just um, draws outside exactly the same shape I don't need to do that let me just delete these what instead you want is to click on contour and then this third option here draw a contour parallel to a line now watch exactly what I do I'm going to change the contour spacing to 20 I'm going to click OK I'm going to click on this line here just inside the left and then this line here, just inside the right. And then I'm going to click on contour again, and this draw a contour parallel again. Um, I invite you to double click actually, yeah, double click, and I'm going to change the space into three. This will make sense in a minute. If I click OK, just inside there, and then just inside there. This is the gap of the slot I'm cutting. However, I need a top. I'm going to now double click on contour again and change it to 40. Click OK. I click just inside the bottom and it's drawn that. Now if I go back to my delete part of an object, I could delete all these lines. Like that one. I might need to delete this whole bit here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I need to also delete these little oh, don't need to do that. Edit undo if you do it and make a mistake. Delete part of an object here. There. But you can see how I've, I've cut slots here that this side piece will slot into. However, I also need a slot in this side piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line across. And that's going to indicate the bottom of um, my slot uh, mechanism. And I'm going to click here, contour, double click. I'm going to have now 15. Click OK. Click just inside there. Double click again. I'm going to click three here now I can delete these bits I no longer need don't need that line and what you'll notice if I do that uh, I've cut a side here and you know if I draw another line here from here to here you'll see they're the same height so this side will slot right into the front okay I'm pretty happy with that um, the only thing is it's all black, and actually to get this to cut, I need it to um, be a different color for cutting, and that's going to be red. So if I select over all of this side, I'm actually going to do something called grouping, edit, group, and then it's all one object. So if I click 
there, everything is highlighted if I click there, everything is highlighted that's all going to engrave so to get it to um, to cut I need to go here line color click on color and then change it to red okay so that fits now that's going to cut I also need this outline to be red so if I select on each of these lines and click red line color red I can slowly go around changing all of the faces uh, all of the lines just the outline to be red and to do the bottom I'm just going to highlight all of that select all of that and again change the color to be red great so now I've got the outline all in red I've got my slots there this is lining up with that one um, I've only got one side so if I dragged over that and then click copy I've now got my two sides I can send this to laser cut the only thing that's uh, missing is some imagery so um, you can actually copy in images if you go on um, uh, YouTube so uh, Google you want some sort of simple image uh, something like this would work quite well I've typed in Charles Winnie Macintosh stained glass rose if you've got anything with loads of detail loads of color like that this one here wouldn't work but if you find a simple simple enough image I'm just gonna copy image and then uh, you just uh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Um, right click and paste it in. Uh, you can scroll out and grab these grip points, shrink it down to a manageable size. Now, just be aware the laser cutter can't cut images, it can't print like a normal printer, it can only cut lines. So, I have to change this um, using a tool called Bitmap, and that will change it to lines. So, if you click on it, and then at the top bitmap you need to document this bitmap and vectorize bitmap this is a really important tool vectorize bitmap click on it again and this is now converting it from an image to lines the computer understands lines it knows how to cut lines it might take a moment to so just give it give it some time now it's got loads of colors still and it doesn't understand that so i need to click on monochrome and when you click monochrome it changes it to black and white and I can adjust the luminance which is the sort of um, how crisp the image is I'm gonna go somewhere in the middle about there and I'll click OK when you're happy click OK and now <coughs> uh, these are becoming lines however it will be still a solid block of black the laser cutter will spend ages trying to engrave that so I'm gonna so go to fill and have no fill click OK and now again I with the yellow grip point I can reposition this somewhere on my clock it's up to you where you put it it could be for example something quite small maybe at the bottom it's your design okay so uh, give that a go document all of the steps you do so that you've got a good understanding of the key skills um, one mistake I've just realized that hole in the middle this also needs to be red, doesn't it? So line color here, red. So that now, if I just reposition this, that's the hole where the clock mechanism will poke through. That's really important, isn't it? Okay. Give that a go.